live from the WHBC Broadcast Center. Find out more about area businesses, agencies, and events. It's what's going on right now. This is Spotlight. And good Wednesday morning, everyone. It is Spotlight on 1480 WHBC and on our Facebook page. You can uh, check us out live right now. So, Or if you miss this and uh, you don't get to hear the whole thing or you want to uh, go and watch it back again. You can do that on our Facebook page anytime because it will live there forever and ever. We become immortal because of social media, Dom. Social media is crazy. <laughs> what happens if the grid goes down for a month? Would would our society survive? Uh, we'd melt. <laughs> <laughs> Dominic Fonte of Dominic Fonte and Associates, Cutler Really. And you can, yes, see us on uh, Facebook right now. And we're going to chat about... Oh, all kinds of different things. I got to ask you one question though, because this was something I saw this morning as I was scrolling, and it made me, it made me think about, um, you know, what some people might be doing these days. I don't know, but I saw that you had listed a um, duplex for sale, and so the person would be purchasing both sides of that duplex, correct? That's correct. So, is are people still doing that? Are they still buying, you know, property that they can maybe live in one side and rent out the other, or whatever? Yes. Um, what's happening now? Some people perceive a rental property as you know, calls at two in the morning and inconvenience and frustration <laughs> and sharing their space with a neighbor, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but but in reality. Um, there's two different things. There's one person that might say, you know what? Um, I have money in the stock market. I have money in my savings account. I'm not earning enough money and I'm a little bit handy. So I think maybe it might be a good idea to buy an investment property like a duplex, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And there's two tenants in it currently on a month to month tenancy and whoever owned it, maybe the rents are a little on the low side. So I'm looking at the numbers as an investor, maybe, so that means I'm not going to live in it. I'm just buying it as an investment. So they're always looking for ROI, return on investment. Okay. And that has a lot to do with, you know, how much you pay for it or how much you're financing, what the expenses are, what the income is, right? And so you have to, you know, know that if I'm looking at it as an investment, I'm going to be more critical on the numbers to make sure it makes sense versus if I'm an owner-occupied. So there was a time when I bought an apartment where I lived in part of it, just like you described, And it was a little different because I had more of a personal need, right? So I said, okay, I didn't mind if it was a little more money or maybe it needed a little more work because I was looking at it as my home, you know, to just kind of step, you know, dip my toe into the market and to try to build wealth over time. Okay. And so so there's two different buyers for that, right? right? Um, But if you are the investor buyer, you know, you just have to understand condition, market value, rents, what it could be, what it isn't. Billy and I were just talking off air about, you know, landlords. You know, sometimes they raise it all the time and it, fl- it flusters you. And sometimes the landlords let you be. And if you're a good tenant, they don't raise it for years. Mm-hmm. And then if they decide to sell it, you as the investor are looking at it and say, well, these rents don't make sense for the price you're asking. So it just depends on what side of it you're on. Right. Okay. See, it takes a lot, but I knew there was... And there's some tax benefits yeah. to it as well. Right. You know, okay. you can deduct things, you build wealth, it's a forced savings plan, and eventually, uh, once you get it paid off, it's a uh, income-producing situation. Right. So instead of, like, buying a nice, expensive car that depreciates in value, mm-hmm. real estate appreciates in value, plus it brings income in, and your tenant helps pay off the mortgage. So there's some pluses and minuses. It doesn't go without a little pain, uh, but it's always a long view. You always look at the long view because it's not a get-rich-quick scheme by any means. Okay. All right. Very Does that good. Make sense? Yes, absolutely. So if you – hey, if, by the way. I don't know if you want to ask any of the listeners if they have any uh, questions, concerns about what's happening in the real estate arena. Uh, I'll try to answer it live if possible. Yeah, we would love for you to. You can call us at 330-450-1480. That's very simple. Or also you can comment, put the question on on the Facebook feed, and Billy will get it to us, and um, Dom can answer it right away live. So if you have any questions at all, I'm sure he could I know he has the answers. I don't know about that, but I'll do the best I can. <laughs> so how's it been, you know, since the last time we talked? I mean, it feels like it feels like it goes it goes up and down and it does, doesn't it? It does. I you mean, know. this is an interesting year because it's an election a year and there's a lot of concerns with inflation and there's concerns with different things. So, you know, the question I've been getting a little bit is is will the election year affect the bottom line, you know, the money part yes, of it? Yes, yes. And so when you go through the history of all the elections, you'll find that typically um, the 
the the, the um, I lost my train of thought there. So what election I was saying, year, people yeah, will change so, things. So, so November during mm-hmm. the election year, it's typically a little bit slower because there's a lot of people that are paying attention to the TV and social media and those different platforms. So. But generally speaking, the majority of the elections, it doesn't really hurt the values of the property. It's fairly stable. It just drops in November. But but keep in mind that, you know, under normal circumstances, April, May, and June is typically the strongest buying cycle. Okay. However, you know, with the way the, the market is with low supply, um, the only control that was happening was those interest rates, right? So if the rates go up too high, it forces people out of the marketplace and they have to rent or figure out plan B, right? Mm-hmm. So, But I would just say in, in general, yes, uh, that would be the case. Okay. Well, again, if you would like to uh, ask Dom a question, 330-450-1480 or check out our Facebook page, the uh, News Talk 1480 WHBC Facebook page, and uh, we can certainly uh, get your questions answered for you. You know, I, I I know a lot of people may be waiting for the interest rates to right. go down, right? Because we're sitting there, and every time we see the Fed talk, you know, we see them talk. We're waiting, waiting, waiting. And it didn't happen this time, but they're saying it's going to happen the next time. So is it worth the wait? I mean, I mean, it, what, you it, know. It, well, the, the trick is, well, so what's happening right now? Um, with some of the negative news that came out with the jobs report and different things, I don't know if you noticed a week or so ago, the stock market uh, yes. took a, a scare for a mm-hmm. minute and then it went back up. So uh, the interest rates, the way it works is they always bake that into what their projections are, what they think is happening. And I'd say about a year ago, the rates were as high as seven and a half percent, which is high compared to what it was for a long time. Uh, but now it's about 6.4, 6.5. So it's down about one percent. And so we're seeing a decent amount of activity or interest or inquiries. Um, I would just say it's based on your situation. And I find a lot of times the potential buyers, they have perception of what's really happening. So that causes them to pause or to stay on the sideline. I would just say this is just always my advice to anybody because it isn't like we do this all the time as a buyer, right? Right. Two, three times in your life. I would say Get a meeting with someone that's savvy, someone that understands your local market, because really it doesn't matter what's happening in California. It only matters what's happening in the area you're interested in for you and your loved ones. And so we could then just it it doesn't cost anything. It's not a big deal to just have a conversation, because I always say an informed decision maker is a happy decision maker. So how you do that is you gather information. Don't go to too many sources. You know, don't put the cart ahead of the horse. It's just a simple process to kind of do a a needs analysis with an expert. And then what happens is you say, okay, that makes sense or it doesn't. And if it makes sense, then you say, okay, what would be like the next step? Mm -hmm. And so not to overwhelm you with a bunch of nonsense, you know, it's a baby stepping process. And then once you get all that information, you say, okay, it makes sense. I'm going to stand in the sideline or what's next step. And so it's a process. And depending on your personality and your worries and concerns, uh, we would kind of address that based on where you are with you, you know, your situation and your loved ones. So it's it's very simple, but it seems complicated. Yeah. So that's why you want to deal with someone that is uh, knowledgeable, uh, experienced, and like I said, can guide you through the process based on where you are. And that's really the trick to it, I think. I guess some people don't really even have a choice, do they? Because maybe somebody's moving and they have to. You know, they're moving from out of town and they're right. coming here to work or, you know, whatever it might be. Or maybe they were renting for a long time and the landlord says, mm, and they said, I don't want to rent anymore. Right. Go that ahead. happens. But but sometimes, you know, I think our perception is, well, I need so much money for a down payment. There's more than 2,000 uh, uh, assisted programs out there that can help all variety of buyers, first, second, third time buyers. But it's just knowing the information. So like a lot of times, you know, I think even when I was younger, I thought, well, you have to put 20 percent down because you don't want too big of a payment. You're trying to you know, make sure you have enough equity into it. Um, but that's not necessarily true. And it has a lot to do with, um, you know, if you're renting, for example, what is your rent payment? And so if you equate that into what does that equal to loan amount, because that's what you're used to, sometimes that works. So I guess the question would be is, you know, based on your comfort zone, based on how you were raised and the worries and concerns you would have, you just want to know what options you have. Yeah. And and I always say that no matter what, you know, as long as I've been doing this, which is going on 37 years, the market has gradually gone up over the long haul 
forever and ever. So the sooner you get into the arena, the sooner you start building wealth. And when you look at the majority of people today, if you have the blessings to be able to do it, you know, a lot of times a good portion of the wealth of a normal person that's like us, you know, working class, hardworking people would be their home. And then over time, you know, it builds in value, the value, you know, the price goes down, the mortgage goes down. And then eventually, you know, if you sell it, you have an asset to help sustain your life. Or in some cases, if you're lucky enough to have the vision, you could buy a second property, which would be like what Pam said, a duplex, which is an income producing property. And you just manage some of the activities, which isn't too hard to do if you know a handyman or if you're a little bit handy yourself. Mm -hmm. And so that then opens up that second tier, which is the tenant pays your mortgage down. You can deduct improvements. It depreciates over time. So from a tax standpoint, there's some benefits there to help lower your tax burden, which they have in place to help people like us. You just have to understand, like, navigate how to do it. Yeah. But then, as you know, over time, the house values tend to go up. So if you have two houses, you got two house values going up. Then it gets paid for and the rents go up a little bit. The house value goes up a little bit. The mortgage goes down. And the next thing you know it, you have maybe ten, twenty thousand coming in extra a year. Well, if you're on Social Security, I can tell you one thing. You're getting twelve hundred, fourteen hundred a month. It's hard to live on that with inflation. So you have to use all the tools at hand. But when you look at the large picture, it's a little bit scary because this is not normal to do this. And so that's why I try to come on and help you understand that I have a story of how I did it. <laughs> and maybe later in the program. Yes, because uh, you said 37 we'll, years, and I was going to yeah. say, well, we, we'll take our break yeah, right there, now. There was a lot of pain and suffering, but I can tell you, <laughs> it. I mean, I'm living proof that this can happen, and I didn't have any golden spoon, I can tell you. All right, there you go. See, <laughs> we'll take our first break. When we come back, we'll find out what he did without a golden spoon. It is uh, Spotlight today. Dominic Fonte and Associates, Cutler Realty, thank you so much so far. Great stuff, and you can call us with questions or uh, put them on Facebook as well. Now back to Spotlight on 1480 WHBC. All right, it is a Wednesday morning, and of course that means Spotlight right here on 1480 WHBC and live on Facebook. And we are uh, sitting this morning with Dominic Fonte of Dominic Fonte & Associates with Cutler Real Estate website. DominicFonte.com and Dom, what's my house worth.com. That's right. Those are some landing pages. If you want to test them out, you know, go to my website. We have a lot of reviews. We have a lot of good information for you. And also, if you want to just get a quick computerized uh, report, pretty quick with a lot of information, go yeah. to Dom, what's my house worth.com. You know, I've often um, done that with people with uh, a rental property right that you live in right just to say because you never know when the landlord's going to say hey would you be interested in buying this rental property oh that's a good right that's a good point so this would be something for the listeners if you're not aware of this um so let's say you're a tenant and you're renting and you had a year lease or whatever and it's now month to month so technically you could give them a written notice to vacate the property or if they decide they want to sell it, they'll give you a notice. Mm -hmm. But let's say if you renew your lease for another year uh, before this happens and they decide to sell the property, since you have a lease for one year, let's say, and whoever buys the property has to inherit that lease. So they can't really raise your rent for that period of time. Just mm -hmm. FYI. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. Very sure. good to know. You always wonder about that. Okay. So – Let's go back to what we were talking about before we went to break and kind of how you got into this business. Um, is this going to be a movie of the week? I don't know, <laughs> man. I, there's a lot of people don't know the full story. But, you know, it's fun, what's funny about life is, you know, a lot of times people judge a book by its cover. So, you know, they'll see me now at age almost 65, you know, been in the business 36, going on 37 years, had a great success, worked really hard. And so it's like an iceberg, right? You see this piece of ice, mm -hmm. this big piece of ice sticking out of the ground, out of the water. But really, where's the most of it? Under, Under the water. Uh -huh. So, so it's like you really don't know the pain and suffering. So, yeah, I, I do kind of have an interesting story, and, I, and I'm not sure if the listeners want to hear all this, but <laughs> uh, it's it's kind of neat, you know. I, I, like I mentioned, I didn't grow up with a golden spoon. I we had very modest means technically, and um, when I was in high school. 
I um, got into this program called OWE. It's called Opportunity Work Experience. Have you ever heard of it? I have not. So that's a situation where maybe I wasn't going to college, but but they, you know, you work half a day. Okay. And then you go to school half a day. And one of the requirements was, you know, um, you have to keep either a checkbook or a savings account. You know, so here I am, a teenager, right? And I'm trying to think large. Well, at the time when I was in this program, I worked in a local grocery store. It was called Carms Foods. They're out of business, but wonderful store, and I learned so much. But anyhow, I would always take groceries out and talk to different people. I just I loved working with people, and I loved the job. It was just great. So you know, I would I had minimum wage, so I was making money. You know, when you're a teenager, that's fair, right? Yeah. Um, and in the meantime, you know, I'd have to go back to school, and they're like, okay, how much do you save? Every month, got to keep giving reports. And then one time they said, well, what are you um, saving for? And they go around to class. I'm saving for records or albums. I'm saving for a stereo. I'm saving for a car. And they asked me, what are you saving for? And I said, a house. And they're like, what? <laughs> well, so what happened was when I was in the grocery store, um, you know, I, I, I mean, obviously I grew up in a, you know, a little bit poor area. And I was always intrigued by, you know, I see different cars and meet different people. And so it was kind of a challenge to me to like a sponge to try to figure out what it is they do because they appear pretty successful. Well, <clears throat> at the time, you know, you got to remember now I'm making minimum wage, so I couldn't think too big at the moment. Mm -hmm. So as I was going through the process, I found that the people that appeared to have some wealth and they were happy and traveling and doing different things, they all seemed to have some real estate, right? And I'm thinking to myself, well... I'm going to save for real estate. So <clears throat> while I was going through high school and working at the grocery store, I kept saving and saving. And I bought a you know junker car, I think, for like 400 bucks. And actually, I bought it from someone I used to take the groceries out to. And then, um, so I ended up buying a house in 81. I don't know if you remember back in 81, but the interest rates were 18%. I was in high school. So so that was mm -hmm. uh, Jimmy Carter was in office. Right, the rates were right, super high. Right. So I bought my first home when I was 21 years old. I, I saved 20%. I put 20% down, had 18%. So I'm looking at these payments, even though it was a smaller price range house. So, you know, it, it was like, so now I understood. This was before I got into real estate. So I understood what it feels like to own real estate. Now, of course, there's worries, but there was a certain pride factor. It's yeah. like, wow, I can't believe this, you know? And so I learned a lot about housing and fixing things and cutting the grass and landscaping. So as I was learning this and still working in the grocery store, still talking to people, trying to figure this out, you know, I said, you know what, maybe real estate might be something I need to do. Well, in the meantime, uh, the grocery store got into some trouble so uh, financially, and they cut my hours from 40 to 20. So now I'm in this house, oh, no. and I'm having some anxiety, thinking, oh, my goodness, I'm going to lose my house. Mm -hmm. So I was taking these groceries out to these uh, ladies that owned a, a gift shop. So they said they needed a, a, a stock boy. So I said, I, I could use some extra. So I worked part time there. Well, anyhow, so what happened was is over the course of those next couple of years, I was thinking to myself, you know, I got. I don't have a college degree or anything. I don't have a skill set. But real estate kept coming to the forefront of how to build wealth. Well, when you're making minimum wage, you're thinking to yourself, how am I ever going to do this? Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like what the millennials are feeling now. It's like, how can I even afford a house nowadays? Yeah. So what happened was, I was. It kept coming back to real estate. So I looked into it, and so I went to Malone University or college at the time. They had cram courses. So I. I didn't really want my boss to know I was doing it because sometimes they would say, well, you're, you know, you're distracted from your job. So I went ahead and did the cram courses. I sat for the exam. I flunked the test. So I was kind of bummed out. Oh. So I had took it again a month or so later. This was like in 87. And then in 1988, I passed the test. So I'm all licensed and I'm thinking to myself, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to dip my toe in. I'm going to just do this slowly and then eventually quit my job and sell real estate full time, right? Well, at this point, I had no experience. And this was, you know, think in the 80s. Yeah. There were no internet, no Google, mm -mm. no YouTube. There were no Windows. As a matter of fact, we didn't even have a fax machine at this time. <laughs> so this was the early stages of the fax machine. <laughs> so anyhow, so I, I had a company I worked at. And so in the meantime, I kind of had a little run in at one of my off at my, my job at the gift shop. And since I was licensed, I thought, you know, screw it. I'm out. I'm just going to leave on Friday and start in real estate on Monday. Now, I didn't really think it through because I just was miserable. And when pain outweighs pleasure, that forces you sometimes to make decisions, yes. right? Yes. So, so um, I go to the real estate office Monday morning at 830. 
and there's no real estate agents in the office. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I wonder where they all are. Well, I didn't realize they didn't come in until later in the day. So the three uh, secretaries were there, and they said, hey, Dom, what are you doing here? It's 830. You're going to be late for work. And I said, I got great news. I quit my job. I'm going to be a full-time real estate agent. They looked at me, and they said, you what? Like, you idiot. Oh, no. So, so right then, I thought I was going to throw up. So I went and sat back <laughs> in my cubicle trembling, thinking, oh, my God, I think I made a huge mistake. Mm -hmm. So basically, that's what happened. And then they called the broker and said to the broker, hey, guess what? Dom quit his job. He's going to be a full-time real estate agent. <laughs> so she comes in at noon and says, Dom, what have you been doing all day? Yeah, I know you've been here since 830. I said, well, I'm just sitting here thinking about what I'm going to do. <laughs> and then do we need a break? No, we're good. We're all right now. So, so what happens is she goes, well, pull the drawer right there on the right of the desk, pull out the phone book. And I said, okay. I pulled out the phone book. She goes, turn to the A's. So I turned to the A's. She goes, just start making calls. And I said, what? I said, I don't even know anything. What am I supposed to say? So she says, just say hello. My name's Dominic. And I was wondering if you're thinking about buying or selling real estate. And so I thought, okay, that's easy enough. I'll try it. So here, there's no one in the office, you know, at this point. I start making these calls as agents are coming in. You know, can you imagine if I'm making these calls? How do you think that went for me? Yes. How many times did I get hung up on? How many oh, times? A lot, So, I would so imagine. rejection isn't like the best thing for people. It mm -hmm. hurts your heart. So uh -huh. after a little while, I was kind of embarrassed. So I went home, took the phone book, and went in my basement because we had a phone line in the basement. And I just kept calling because I didn't want anybody to hear me. Because it was pretty in yeah. insulting. Yeah. <clears throat> so after I did this for a period of time, I realized that I'm not going to get to my destination. I'm going to go out of business because in real estate, if you don't help solve problems, you don't get paid. So no results, no pay. It isn't like you get paid on Friday. Right. And after a little period of time, I decided I better change my strategy. And so I went from the frying pan, right? Mm -hmm. And then I said, okay, I didn't really have any money. So I went and bought some of those little plastic bags you hang on doors, and I put some free stuff in that we had in the office, and a magnet I bought, and I bought a map, and I went door to door from the southwest end of Canton where I lived all the way up to Lake Cable. Every house I hit back and forth until I got to Lake Cable. Now, the problem was is when I started this, this was in the um, late winter before spring, and so I would go from nine to five, door to door, but when it was cold out, no one answered. So yeah. it was easy. I could just hang my stuff on the door. But after like a month or so of this, I realized if I don't start talking to people, I'm not going to have any results, right? Mm -hmm. So I was just in the spring. By this time, I was up towards Lake Cable, and I said, I'm going to touch every house on the water. So I mapped it out. Every day I would do it. And I remember this one day I was knocking on a door. It was a quarter till five. I did it all day. I was hungry. I was tired. I had holes in my shoes because I was dragging my feet because I just didn't want to do it anymore. But I didn't have any customers. No one knew who I was. And so finally, this guy comes to the door and he says, can I help you? And I launched into my presentation. Hello, my name is Dominic Fonte. I'm a new real estate agent going door to door to meet all the neighbors. I have this information and valuable information. I gave him the packet and then I handed him a, a magnet and I said, I was wondering, you know, if you have a need or a question, here's my magnet. Could you put it on the refrigerator and call me if you need anything? Mm -hmm. And he says, Dominic Fonte. So I was thinking he was going to say, you know what? I think I went to school with your dad. Uh -huh, right, so so right. what he ended up doing was he flung it out in the yard and told me to get lost. <sighs> so I didn't see that coming. No. So that's basically how my career started. That hurts. We, we probably need a break. We do need that. a break now and we'll come back and uh, talk more. But that's a, that's a good, I mean, that's Carl working hard to get where you need to be. All right, we'll be back with Spotlight right here on 1480 WHBC. 1480 WHBC. And welcome back to Spotlight on this 14th day of August. Pam Cook with you this morning. I'm joined by Dominic Fonte of Dominic Fonte and Associates with Cutler Real Estate. And um, we were just kind of talking about his path, his journey to uh, success in the real estate business. And I was kind of laughing because I said, oh, gosh, you know, I could never take the rejection like you took the rejection of the man throwing the card into the yard, right, or the, the magnet yeah, yeah. into the yard. But, um, you know, it was kind of like when I first started being a news reporter, my boss, she would always say to me, well, what, what's the worst thing going to happen? 
just ask them. Just do it. You're not going to die from it. Just go. It's you know? not, it's not a pleasant experience it's when you not no when you get a, a it's hard yeah it mm-hmm. was it was you didn't I mean if someone's rude or something you kind of get it yeah but when they seem nice and all of a sudden next thing you know say get lost and <laughs> fling it out in the yard I mean I was like hurting at oh, that I point bet. I bet you know because you've been doing I've been doing this for like months door knocking and not having great success and unfortunately I knew it was coming to an end and I knew I had to figure it out. So the pain of failure wasn't as bad, you know, so like failing would hurt more than being rejected. Mm -hmm. But I remember that day I couldn't even finish the route that I was doing because I was just so taken back. And I remember when I went home, I didn't have an appetite. The next day um, I had to get up and I didn't want to get out of bed. You know, it just was, I was really down. And, but I knew that, if I didn't figure this out, I was going to lose everything. Uh, so that wasn't a very pleasant thing. So the pain of that forced me to get out of bed, put my suit on, put my holy shoes on, and pick up where I left off. And it was really funny because when I went back, I hit the last two houses I didn't get done the day before. I went around the corner, and sure enough, there's a, a, a postal box there and someone emptying the postal box. I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute. If it's a male person, right? They may know the route, who do they know. So I asked him, I said, do you know anybody that might be thinking about selling? He goes, well, I can't really say, but, you know, maybe over here I noticed a few things, people Mm -hmm. that maybe, you know, that were going through a divorce or whatever. And so I just continued down that street knocking on doors. And it was funny, this one lady, she was an elderly lady, she was a widower, and she says, you know, I can't do the steps. I knocked on the door and I said, hello, my name's Dominic. And I just am introducing myself because I was new and no one knew who I was. And she goes, you look really hot. Would you like some iced tea? And I said, yes, I would. <laughs> I would love and some. that was how it all turned around for me. So that's where it started. And I got better at my skill. And then so fast forward to today, you know, so that was back in 89. And here we are, you know, 2024. So what happened is over the course of time, I learned it the hard way. But I, I did get better at my skill. And, you know, and we're able to shorten the process. And I think as of now, I helped over 2,500 2,500 families. And, and if you do the right thing, you know, you, you know, over the long haul, like I always talk about with the heart of a teacher, it seems like you get a lot of word of mouth. People will say good things and write reviews and things like that. So that's how I get most of my business now. And then when I turned 60, like four or five years ago, you know, I thought, what am I going to do? I have all this information. Am I going to go to my grave with it? So I started talking to our owner and, and I basically parsed all 35 years, 36 years, into 15 hours, into eight segments, and I call it the blueprint to the six-figure income in real estate. And I went to, and I got it approved through uh, the Library of Congress, so I have it all copyrighted into 15 hours. It's approved through the state for CE, and I teach it twice a year to fellow agents to help lift them up. So that's basically, so I'm having that's, a little more fun now yeah. compared to the first half. That's pretty awesome. So that's the iceberg story. And you know what? Think about it. Think about it going door to door. Nowadays, people do not no. want somebody at their door. And I doubt that old lady would invite you in for iced tea these days. Well, pr- probably not. <laughs> but, you, but you know, it's funny. Like back, you know, in, in, in that period of time before tech and before the craziness, it mm-hmm. seemed, uh, people were more excited to have company. They'd get the, yeah. the cookies out or the, the cake. Uh, now Here's someone coffee. rings the doorbell, man, you dive to the floor like, duck, who's at the door? I don't want to answer it. I don't want to answer it. <laughs> yeah, it's just funny how things have changed. <laughs> it's our society, I it guess. It is. It is. And again, if anybody has any questions for Dom, you can put them on our Facebook page right there where we are live right now. And um, Billy will read them for us and Dom can answer. Or you can call us, 330-450-1480. If you have a question, uh, he'd be more than happy to answer that. And, you know, there's so much going on. You know, and I always talk to you about the the fear of buying a house. And it's not always just young people. You know, there are older people maybe who say, oh, I have to go through this again. And, you know, it's different now. Is it different now? How does that work? It, it, well, so what happens now? There's a new uh, change happening. Uh, some people are aware of it, some are not. So there was a uh, lawsuit with the National Association of Realtors. Um I don't remember what the case was, but they had to, they basically, they're not saying they did anything wrong. It's just how it works. Sometimes, you know, the attorneys might see a class action lawsuit to a weak situation and they settle. Uh, Basically, as of August 17th, which is in a couple of days, Mm -hmm. um, the way it has to be done with real estate professionals now is if you're a buyer out there 
and you want to go to her house, uh, the buyer agent that you work with has to have a written agreement now. Whereas before, we should have been doing it all along, but normally they wouldn't do it until you find a house, mm -hmm. the buyer's agreement. And it talks about commissions, compensation, things like that. Uh, so unfortunately, there was always, you know, transparency is always a tricky thing. And that's why I always say you want to work with a professional so that you get educated throughout the process. Mm -hmm. uh, but the commission can come from the buyer broker now. Um, so that, or I'm sorry, the buyer paying the broker, uh, it still can come from the seller paying the broker. Um, but it's right now, it's not as transparent in the multiple listing like it used to be. So you just have to make sure if you're working with an agent uh, and they ask you to sign an agreement, you just have to make sure they explain it to you why you're doing that. Yeah. That's just, it's a, it's a law we have to do now. Okay. And that's so that the people know what your possible commission would right, be and all right. that kind of stuff. And how we get compensated. Okay. So you know what to expect. Um, you know, obviously, you know, I've been doing this a long time. There's always been changes. I feel that the big issue now is, is that as a real estate professional, um, you just have to have better skills and, and make sure you're explaining everything to the potential buyers, potential sellers. Um, nothing's really changed in the sense that commissions have always been negotiable. You can sell your house by yourself. You can pick the cheapest real estate agent. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can do. Um, so it's whatever you're you're comfortable with. But at the end of the day, you know, if you're working, especially as a young buyer, first time buyer, you know, paying for down payment, closing costs, moving expenses, you sure don't have probably extra room for commission. So, you know, it may have to be negotiated in with the house you're buying. And so it's a little more complicated. But I think once it initially rolls out, people will find their happy spot. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think you know, it's still going to be fine for everybody. Mm -hmm. It's just new stuff to figure out again. Yeah. Basically. And that's why people have you. <laughs> yeah. Reach out to us, my team. We, we are dialed in and we can help you. Like I said, you know, guide you through the process. It's just a lot. You know, there's a lot of moving parts. And, you know, like I always mention is between 25 and 75 years old, you might only do it, you know, two or three times. Right. right. And so it's like, not an everyday occurrence. So, and when you're younger, you sometimes you have no idea. Well, you know, when you think about for. the the buyers buying, I'd say forty three percent of them are you know first time buyers yeah. or you know younger buyers because you know the demographics. There's a ton of millennials, Gen Z, Gen X, uh, and then of course we're in the boomer department, so we're kind of on the tail end of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, but Billy here, which you can't see, we should probably turn the camera so we can see Billy. <laughs> Billy, you should wave to the camera so they know what the real guy looks like. This is the guy that's making things happen. Yep, he's the guy. There he is. <laughs> so, but anyhow, if you do have any questions about anything that's happening in the market, interest rates, um, there is some appreciation. So I was just going to say real quick for some stats. Um, nationally, in the U.S., you know, a lot of times the headlines – you hear the headlines, you're like, wow, you know, things are not so good or they are mm -hmm. good. But whenever you buy or sell real estate, you always want to know your local market, know where you're at, what jurisdiction you're in. And but just hypothetically in North Canton or Stark County or the surrounding areas, it's like 2.2 months of inventory. And we always go back to what does that mean in English? You yeah. know, because yeah. like if you have five or six months of inventory, which we haven't had for a long time. Um, that's where it's more of a balanced market. That means how many homes are on the market, how many potential buyers are on the market, how long does it take to absorb the inventory? So five to six months is a good balance. We haven't seen that for a long time. Wow. And so that's partly why it's frustrating yeah. is because it's like, wow, as a seller, you're selling it for more and, and like within 30 days typically. But, you know, I mean, as a buyer, sometimes it can be flustered. You know, you get flustered. And so you really want to know um, when you work with someone, what is the best way to find the best value? And it seems like the prices are still selling close to asking price if they're priced realistically, you know? Yeah. So it's location, condition, yeah. and price. So it's interesting stat. Um, and then as we go into the winter, you know, it'll change a little bit too. And I watch it month by month. But if you ever just want to know just a hypothetical, Dom, what's my house worth .com, um, that's an algorithm computer that – Basically, it shoots your report of what's happening right around. It's not an exact science, but it's it's kind of interesting. Yeah, A lot of is. good information about that, and it's no hassle to do. Just go to Dom, what's my house worth dot com. It's kind of fun, actually. Yeah, type it in and just test it out. <laughs> yes, absolutely. All right, we're going to take our final break uh, on this spotlight on this Wednesday morning, and we will return.
All right, we are back with Spotlight. Dominic Fonte of Dominic Fonte and Associates with Cutler Real Estate. DominicFonte.com and DomWhat'sMyHouseWorth.com. That's right. Yes, that's so, the fun So part. what were we just doing off air? We were talking to your <laughs> hidden math. buddy over here, math, which can give you like a stomach pain. Right? Yes. And Billy probably has one. So Billy, who just waved a minute or two ago, uh, Billy, why don't you just say what we were just talking about off air since you're not on air at the moment or at least right now. Yeah, a mm -hmm. little bit about when the best time to stop renting and move on to looking at buying a house and you know, I think sometimes I'm in one zone, sometimes I'm in another, so, and I know a lot of people my age are. So I have a question. So you did say that a lot of your friends at your age, um, what age group would you be in, would you say? Millennials or? Uh, yeah, I, I, th I think that's. I don't know if you're Gen Z. I think it's a Gen Z, Gen yeah, Z. yeah. About, you know, my age group's like 25 to 35. Okay. So that's a lot of first-time buyers there. Yeah, and, definitely. And what we were talking about, you know, you have a concern that, you know, you're renting, and before you know it, you're there one year, two year, three year, and we know the average rent nowadays is eleven hundred. Now, once in a while, you can get it for less, but three years goes by pretty quick, wouldn't you say? Absolutely, yeah. So, so, so let's do some quick math here, so you can get a stomach ache. <laughs> so, if you take eleven hundred dollar average rent times twelve months times three years, that's how much, Billy? Just short of forty thousand dollars. Say that one more time. Just short forty thousand dollars. Now, if that doesn't punch in the stomach, mm -hmm. I don't know what else does. But here's the thing: so we, you know, we're all busy, right? And we just go through minute by minute because we're all so stressed out about everything. But I'm telling you right now, there's a reason for rents as transition, as temporary. But you know, over the long haul, if there's a way that you can get into the arena, Billy and your friends, have them call me. I will educate you. Here's yeah. what I say. So if you paid 1100 a month, hypothetically, and you divided that backwards, and you say, okay, what does that equal into a house payment or a loan amount? So that would be the first thing we do, and we say, okay, what does that look like? But then let's say since you're, you know, inflation and you're paying all this rent, it's hard to save money, isn't it? Yeah. So it's like you feel hopeless. Like what I found, and even with my children, they say that, you know what, I don't feel that we have the same opportunity as you did. So we're kind of a little bit bummed out about it. And so here's what I say. There are programs out there, grants where you can get free money technically. Well, it's not free. It's probably taxpayer money. But, but the point is if you know about this and in your mind you say, okay, if I get into the arena, say, this next year instead of five years from now or never, you can add, you know, take advantage of the appreciation, which is probably around 5% anyhow, 5% a year over the course of time. You have pride of ownership. You can you could feel good about customizing the house. Now, when you have a, an apartment, sometimes you're irritated because the landlord may not respond as quickly as you want, and you don't want to overdo it because it's really fixing their house up, not your house. Right. And so it's always a gray area. So I would say that it hurts not at all to talk to someone like me, like we did off air, and yeah. this is what prompted this conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that are not feeling hopeful. There is hope for you. I would just say you just baby step into it, have that conversation, okay? And what we're going to end up doing then is having a meeting and looking at it for what it is and showing how we can switch that into ownership. The sooner you get into ownership, if that's okay, if you're not afraid, and there is a way to do it, and I can walk you through the steps to do it. I would highly recommend reaching out to Dominic Fonte at 330-418-15. 35. So that would be 418-1535. Call or text. We'll set up a meeting. It's no obligation. It's just really like with the heart of the teacher to just give you the basics to help you start thinking. Because it's always like this. You think about it, then you plan it, then you do it. It doesn't right. happen. Like you don't do it first. You think about it, plan it, do it. Think, plan, do. Because if you don't have that plan, then you're scared to death and yeah. you don't know what you're facing. And, and that's really what my hope is for the listeners is to make sure that you have that informed information to help you. And then if you want to just get a sense of what you would experience working with me and my team, we have over, I don't know, 450 five-star reviews. Yeah. And, and they're ones that are not just five stars. You can read stuff, what people say, uh, to give you peace of mind and make, it, make that call. Like we were talking about cold calling. Yeah. Just make the call. We won't bite. It's okay. We're not going to torture you. The first step, yeah. you so can do it. Do so it. go to DominicFonte.com, read some of those reviews, and then do the step of the call.
I told you I got my stuff thrown out in the yard. It didn't stop me. <laughs> and in the long run, it made me a better person, more caring, more empathetic. And he'll help you out. Thanks for great. the help. Yeah, thank yep, you for awesome the stuff. And Billy, this is unusual, but thank you for coming on because oh, there's a lot advice. of people, young people just like you, including my kids. Yeah. So it's Mine constantly too. education. So All right, Dom. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thanks for having me. Good luck, everybody.